Larry Turnley. Most people uh, know me as LT. Uh, I'm from Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, uh, formerly incarcerated. I did 20 summers in federal prison and was uh, sentenced to life in prison in 1996. Uh, and uh, I eventually got my sentence overturned when they changed the crack law in 2009. They reduced my sentence to, from life to 24 years or to 22 years. And I eventually got some extra time because I got caught up in a riot uh, uh, while in prison. But but yes, yeah, so my 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 sentence eventually got overturned the crack law, and then I got immediate release in 2016 under the drug minus two when they changed uh, the drug, uh, 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 I say the drug uh, time, the time you get for all drugs, uh, that table, they changed that in 20, you know, 2016 up under Obama and I got a mid release then and been home okay. ever since. Yes, sir. Okay, great, great, great. So you've been home since 2016? Yes, 2016. Okay, okay. How does it feel to be home? Before we get into all that other stuff, a yes. little bit of your backstory, how does it feel to be home, my brother, and how has it been adjusting to the new society that you came home to? Oh, uh, man, it's amazing. You know, coming from, you know, uh, all day, coming from life, it's like, shoot, every day is a holiday out here. You know, I don't see no reason to be upset because I'm out here on the bonus. You know what I'm saying? I'm out here on the bonus. So every day I try to maximize each day, get as much as I can get out of it, however, at my own pace, because uh, I got a 50-year plan. So, you know, I'm not going to hamstring myself with a five-year plan, 10-year plan. I got a 50-year plan. And, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a slow walking, and the opportunities come before me. You know, I'm just going to maximize them, leverage them, and hopefully uh, bring more awareness to uh, helping the youth out here. Okay, great, great, great. So while are you speaking on, you know, bringing awareness and doing things like helping out the youth, since this is the beginning of the interview and some people are not going to make it to the end, why don't you go ahead and tell the people some of the things you are invested in in the community? Uh, currently, uh, uh, I just got appointed to the procurement board here in Nashville, which uh, the procurement board oversees uh, uh, in goods and services. Anytime someone wants to make a bid or anytime somebody get a Metro government contract, they got to go before the procurement board. And I just got uh, appointed to it. And it's uh, somewhat historical because a convicted felon has never been on this type of board. And, uh, you know, I, I like to give thanks to the people who believed in me for giving me this appointment. And uh, I definitely uh, don't plan on uh, letting them down. And the, the people that I fight for and the reason why I'm on this board is to advocate for the laborers and convicted felons who want to try to start their own businesses where they will have someone that's in these rooms going to be able to advocate for them and give them a shot or at least let their voice be heard. Great, great, great. That's that's extremely great, my brother. And, and congratulations. Congratulations on reaching that milestone. Yes, sir. You Thank know, you, that's, bro. That's not a minor thing at all. It's not a minor thing at all. Yes. And uh, uh and I was just saying the other day how uh because like six six or seven months ago I got a letter in the mail that they wanted me to attend jury duty. And hey, it was like, you know, I was kind of honored. I was like, what they feel let me on the jury, you know what I'm saying? So uh Right. Uh, I filled out the paperwork and then, you know, they, they let me know, nah, I can't get on there because I'm a convicted felon or whatever. You know what I'm saying? But to be able to now be on a procurement board where I'm going to be, you know what I'm saying, sitting uh, uh, in a position of power uh, uh, with those who are, who do have power or do have, you no, know, uh, 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 I would say, uh, 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 great financial means. But but, you know, getting that opportunity to be there instead of a jury, you know, it just shows sometimes the hypocrisy in the laws in this country and, you know, how things do need to be readdressed. I definitely agree. You know, there's a lot of a lot of backwards things going on. You know, a lot of things that favor some people more than other people. 
you know, in this world of things that are not perfect, that's just an extra thing that needs to be looked at. But, you know, with people like you who are who are making strides and, and showing that people like us can come from where we come from, make our mistakes, but become better men at the end of it, that just makes it easier for them to have a case study. That will make it easier for them to fix laws in the future. Yo, just walking in the house in my room. Gotta make a pretty doll. She don't like wearing clothes. Just left Concord. No Carolina. I was licking on booty in a whole lot of vagina. Eat a booze with some ice cream. Sure remember you. Ice cube make a gym. She ever like the way do. Do sitting with the crew. I bet get some food. I see you looking like a dude. Had to make a move. Make a move. My analytics tell me that majority of you who watch my videos are not subscribed. And this, you know, it's... It's making the algorithm a little tricky for me, you know? If you like to watch my videos, go ahead and hit subscribe right now. Also, hit that notification bell. Go ahead and sing your boy, you know, a dollar or two. You say you are from Nashville, Tennessee. Yes, Nashville, Tennessee. You came up in the 80s slash 90s. I was born in 1972. Okay. What were your early years like? Did you grow up with your parents? And what was your relationship with your parents? What was it like in the home for you? Like, what were what were your early years like? Uh, my early years was, uh, uh, of course, uh, like uh, most children, they grew up or uh, 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 were born around that time. If you didn't get hit with the crack epidemic, then you got hit with the heroin, uh, 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 the explosion of heroin. And uh, uh, that affected uh, my household to where my father, who uh, uh, was one of what was a, a great basketball player here in Nashville, and uh, you know uh, him uh, becoming addicted to heroin, which I feel, you know, I hate to kind of because I, I I like to try to try to try to bring things up to the current day uh, mm -hmm. as well, even if if it was in the past where. It's like for us, if we want to deal with reparation, I feel that we're going to have to deal with reparation personally. Because I feel that the heroin affected my family, the drug war affected my family, along with other things that's current, where people don't have to keep saying what well, happened a long time ago. Because we got things that's taking place right now that we have been uh, uh, affected. And the government somewhat was complicit in it. But I just that's say that right now. Yes. But. But yes, uh, uh, yeah, my father was locked up my whole life, my whole mm -hmm. entire life. I, you know, I seen him uh, going to visit him in prison, and uh, I say he might have got out. One, well, he got out one time, and I seen him in the free world. But other than that, mostly my entire life, my father was incarcerated. Okay. Yes. Being a young, a young black kid. See now, I can relate in one way because I grew up without my father as well, but my father was there. He just happened to pass away. But I can still relate to not having a father in your house, you know. Even sometimes our women don't understand how important it is to have a father in the home to, to rear children. So... You coming up as a young kid, dealing with your father, not being in the home because he's dealing with his issues or he's constantly in prison. How did that, how do you feel like, what effect do you feel like that had on you as a youth coming up? Oh, well, it made me, of course, uh, look for those type of uh, uh, role models or those type of figures in the streets. And, uh, you know, being that where I lived at was the Lord Street Drive, which uh, uh, anybody from Nashville know that is, you know, that was one of the most dangerous uh, drives. And uh, as well as just uh, a lot of violence took place in that area. So I'm 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 living there. So every day I go out on my back porch and my front yard, I'm in that element where I don't, you know, as a youth seen gun, sh you know, shootouts seeing prostitutes getting beat up by pimps, seeing, you know, people are uh, uh, overdose or, or people, you know what I'm saying, just wig out when crack hit. You know, it just, you know, just being exposed to all that right there. It's like, 
uh, you learn to uh, uh, take on a, an extreme uh, mindset or extreme, you, you know, you learn to take extreme positions. What was your relationship with your mom? I understand dad was gone. Yes. And, but still, for those of us who grow without a father in the house, it could be even worse if you and your mom are not on the same page. You know, some of us, we had younger mothers. So, you know, they may want to drop us off with grandma while they go try to live their youth out and then they come back and try to settle down later. How was it with you and your mom? Oh, you me and mom yes, we were extremely close. Uh, very close. Still close now. Matter of fact, I take care of my mom uh, right now to this date. And uh, uh, I, I took on that role uh, at a very young age in my teens of uh, uh, caring for my mother or being in a position to take care of her. Uh, and yes, uh, we always had a, a close bond and a close relationship. And, uh, you know, she tried. But being a single mother, along with her suffering from uh, her bouts with uh uh, just being overwhelmed with two children and in, in, in that climate and, you know, the father being locked up, basically both for me and my, because I have a sister also being locked up both for our lives, you know, most of our lives, you know, that's a, that's a, that's a heavy burden. And then my mother was strong where she didn't want welfare. So, mm. you know, so we had to, you know, go without food because she was prideful. You know, because she just didn't want to just accept no government assistance and didn't want to be grouped in that. So, you know, she was a gambler. She was, you know what I'm saying, a hustler. She did it all. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, uh, 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 that's where I kind of, you know what I'm saying, got my hustling uh, mindset from was from her. Okay. Yes, I can I can relate to that, too. You know, um, my mom was 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 the same way. My mother was the same way. I was the baby. I got two older sisters. She had her first child very young. She was like 15 years old. She had a second one when she was around 21 years old. And she needed help. She had to rely on the government for a little while, but she had so much pride, you know. She took advantage of my aunt who was willing to babysit my sisters, and she put herself through school. Mm. And as soon as she got a job, she was done with it. By the time I was born, I never even had to see that life. Because mm. from way back, from 20-something, you know, my mother just, she wasn't having it. She, you know, she ain't want the white folk all in the business. Yeah. You know, all that other, all that, you know. <laughs> unfortunately, not a lot of women are like that today. Mm. But, you know. These are special women who we're talking about. Yes, absolutely. Aside from the street life that you eventually veered into, what kinds of things were you into as a youth? What kind of hobbies? What kind of talents did you realize you had at a young age? What, uh, what yeah. Uh, well, I realized, uh, for one, I was uh, very uh, smart, very intelligent, uh, in high school, I got who's who among American high school students. Uh, I got that award uh, all through uh, elementary, junior high, on up to like my 11th grade, 11th or 12th grade year, I was on a roll principal list uh, all through school. It was just, I wrestled uh, for uh, in high school. Uh, I started wrestling when I was a, a, a sophomore because I was playing football up to that point, but when I entered my freshman year of uh, high school, I went and took a physical, and I only weighed 107 pounds, 107. And uh, the doctor wrote on my physical that uh, I I wasn't big enough to play football, so the coaches, being that he documented that, they wouldn't let me play until I had to wait, uh, you know, the, the following year. And I kind of let that discourage me. and. Uh, didn't continue to pursue football and went on into wrestling. But yeah, those were some of the things that I'd done. But football, I did coming up. My daddy was a hell of a basketball player. And, you know, I kind of adopted that when I got inside of prison. I started 
playing a little basketball, you know, defense especially, that is. <laughs> they, still, they still talk about me in the system right now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So what, you, what, what you compare your game to? Like what? Dennis uh, Rodman, Ron Artest? Uh yeah, I would say uh, yeah, I I would say more like uh our test at you know uh but I wasn't just uh 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 you know I I was ag very aggressive you know uh -huh. but but at the same time you know uh, uh I I still play within the lines I ain't try to hurt nobody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cause you know them them games get real competitive. You already know it, it get real now. You know what I'm saying? How young? Do you think you were when you first got exposed to the street life? And what did you think you took from it? Do you remember some of the first things you may have gotten yourself into? You know, you ain't got to get, you know, too descriptive, yeah. but just how old were you when you first, you know, started realizing that, you know, this is, this is different. Like this is legal. Were you exposed by like maybe like uh just hanging outside? Like earlier you had said, you know, you seen shootouts. Were you like one of those kids who you was like nine years old playing in the park and unfortunately a shootout? Like how was it for you? I would say uh uh coming up back in those days, uh you know, uh, 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 I being that coming from a single mother, uh, you know, you got to try to try to fend for yourself. You got to you got to, you know, find a way if ain't no food in the refrigerator, you got to find a way to go get it. So I used to, you know, I started off uh, me and my, my partners, you know, we'll go to the store and, you know, sh start stealing whatever we wanted. We want to eat. You know what I'm saying? And then it went from from that, you know, to, uh, uh, you know, shoe seeing how we can uh, uh you know come up on uh, uh more more uh i say to come up on uh more opportunities to where it's uh it didn't require us to uh, uh, uh depend on uh, a, a a job because in most cases uh, you know, the jobs weren't paying that and, and, and all you seeing around you, you know what I'm saying, is uh, people get money or uh, poverty. Then uh, sometimes, you know, you just fall into just becoming a product of your environment. And that's what I became, a product of my environment when I, you know, going from stealing. Then when I seen how people can make money from selling drugs, I started, you know what I'm saying, you know, uh, trying to sell drugs uh, when I I say my junior year in high school, I started, you know what I'm saying, trying to, you know, uh, experience selling a little drugs, but it was it was more shoe just trying to make sure, you know, that I can uh dress well because I wore hammer downs most of the time going through school, you know what I'm saying? So just having a, a opportunity to, you know, wear new clothes, a new outfit. And yes, I worked at McDonald's when I was 13. However, it, it, it was just, you know, uh, you, you know, you start getting exposed to more. Just like now with social media, children are exposed to more. So yeah. it was like the more I was getting exposed to things, the more I started wanting to, you know, have the things that I saw people have around me. And it led to, to that right there. And eventually, uh, 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 you know, I, I was, like I said, I was very smart. So. My mindset was I knew that it was no career in selling drugs. <laughs> you know, I knew this. And, you know, it, uh, uh, I knew that uh, 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 if I was going to continue to do it, you know, I needed a, a time and a date when I was going to leave it alone. Mm -hmm. And 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 and, and it, it's, it's like it happens so many times. Every time a person be ready to buy out or leave some alone, that's when you get jammed up. And, you know, I eventually on the back end, that's what happened. But prior to when I was selling drugs in high school, I was just doing it just to to just have some money in my pocket and, 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 and kick it with the females, you know. OK. Yes. About how long would you say your run was as far as selling drugs until 
you got arrested and started doing time? Well, I'll say this. Uh, I stopped selling drugs in high school because I was going to the military. And because, again, I was smart. I was like, sure, I can go to the military and get a Cadillac as opposed to selling drugs to get it. Because everybody else was selling drugs to get them little short Cadillacs or whatnot. Mm -hmm. So I was like, well, I'm going to go to the military. Uh, and the only reason why I was going to the military was to get a Cadillac. Because I didn't mm -hmm. want to sell drugs. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? To get it. So uh, I wind up enlisting in the Navy. Passed the test. And was on my way. I was on the late entry program on my way to the Navy. And uh, the week before, a couple of days before I went, I was going to go. Uh, they uh, they brought, uh, it was the first time they ever brought uh, the uh, Metro Nashville police helicopter out. You know, they brought it out. And uh, uh, she went, they flew over our community. And people was like, you know, it's a big dice game. People all out, you know what I'm saying? They were like... Man, they filmed me, they filmed me, because they turned the big light on with so many people. And somebody was like, man, uh, shoot it, shoot it. And, you know, shoot, I'm 18, on my way to the Navy. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, shoot, uh, give me the gun. You know what I'm saying? And I just let off all the shots in the gun, and it hit a gas line, and the, the helicopter, you know what I'm saying, got to spinning around and had to make emergency landing. And, you know, from there, you know, sure, it was people screaming and hollering my name. I just did this. I just did that. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, <laughs> yeah, so I'm talking about, you know, it was. <laughs> and then, you know, they got to showing it on the news, uh, you know, through that week, throughout that week. And uh, I say uh, I might have been, uh, uh, I say, free f I, after that incident, maybe three days afterwards and they came me and my partners was on our way to a wrestling tournament. I told you I used to wrestle. So I graduated, but we were just going just to check it out. You know what I'm saying? And they bum rushed me and him, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, uh, lock, uh, lock, lock, you know, grabbed me and told me, you know, they had people who, who may, you know, say what they said, whatever, whatever. But, uh, I got blessed, uh, being that I was smart in school on my way to the Navy and all my teachers wrote letters and stuff to the judge. And, uh, uh, another blessing was the, the person who was in a helicopter. He, he wound up being at my lawyer's sister's house and he was able to have a conversation with him to where, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I got blessed with probation. They gave me, uh, three years probation, but then they eventually gave me a, another year of probation for, for something that, I was found not guilty on because it was just like when I got out, it was like an all out assault where it was just me against the police. You know what I'm saying? Me, and it, it was like constantly until, you know, the feds came in because I went full fledged into the streets. And when I went full fledged into the streets, I wind up getting shot. The police wind up shooting me uh, 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 like. What? Four did years. They, did they shoot um, you because, like, you got into a shootout with the cops? No, no, they shot me. Uh, where uh, they was, they was, it, it was like on the on the humbug. But the way that they wrote it out was, I was trying to kill them. Of course, yeah. to cover up Both them shooting. Yes, yes, to cover up them shooting. Yeah. Yes, but they uh came on a call to uh uh. Someone had a domestic, uh, uh, a, a domestic call. So I go up on the porch. I see the police roll up street. So I'm like, hold on, let me slide over here. You know what I'm saying? Cause we finna go to the club, and you know we got our guns on us. So we were like, okay, we just gonna put our guns up and uh, head on to the club. Cause you know it ain't really no beef down there. So when the police come, you know what I'm saying? I just ease up on somebody's porch, just chilling, thinking they just gonna ride on about their business, and then I can. Go on by my, my way. But as I'm on the porch, I hear, I hear, you know what I'm saying? You know, the like the uh, the radio of the police. So I look over, I see, damn, it's police. I'm on like a high rise kind of. Uh, I say it may have been about, by, by 12 to 14 feet in the air. You know what I'm saying? So they get to coming up the steps. It's, you know, you come up this landing, then you got to go around, come up another landing. 
And when they get to the top, you know what I'm saying? I'm in the door. Cause I tried, I knocked on the first door. It was open. The screen was open. You know what I'm saying? Well, the door was open, but I saw through the screen, you know, the people moving around. So I'm like, hey, can I come in? You know what I'm saying? I'll give y'all some money. You know what I'm saying? Let me run through the back door. So they won't let me in. So I go to the next door and they, the police, uh, get up to the top of the steps. So I'm acting like I'm knocking on the door. So they like you in the door, I turn around. So when they tell me to turn around my hands, or I put my hands up. They see I got a pistol right here when I raise my hands up. So when I raise my hands up, I just rush them. You know what I'm saying? I rush them and, and bust them. You know what I'm saying? Jumped off the, uh, jumped off the, uh, the porch down. And as soon as I hit the ground, the police, you know what I'm saying? Pop, reached over and popped me. You know what I'm saying? And when he popped me, you know what I'm saying? I take the gun, I throw it. So now, you know, they, they don't know who I am. I don't know what done happened, but it came out. They was there because the one, the first door I went to, her boyfriend beat up and they thought uh -huh. he was, they thought he was, I was him. But uh -huh. in the process of them finding out who I was, the one who shot down the police helicopter. Yeah. Now they hitting me when I'm in the hospital. They, you know, I'm in the bed. They doing me like this. You know what I'm saying? It was just so much. You know what I'm saying? That was just going on to the point where I knew, uh, it was a blessing in disguise of me going to the feds because if I hadn't went to the feds, I know that you know I knew it was going to be a situation where the police were probably going to kill me. You know. All right. So that situation. Is not what led you to the feds. No. But this is a situation. They gave me a life sentence. That helped me get a life sentence because those were two prior convictions of violence that they assumed. You know what I'm saying? Along with a drug case, that's three strikes. Oh, okay. you know oh yeah. So they, they compiled you know it on time. Yeah. Yes, yes, no, I'm saying. Yellow just blocking in the house in my road, gotta make her put it on. She don't like when clothes just left Concord. No care, a lot. I was licking on booty in a whole lot of vagina. Eat a booze with some ice cream, she'll remember you. Ice cube, make a chip, she ever like the one they do. See me with the crew, I done get some food. I see you looking like you do. I done make a move, make a move. My analytics tell me that majority of you who watch my videos are not subscribed, and this, you know, it's. It's making the algorithm a little tricky for me, you know? If you like to watch my videos, go ahead and hit subscribe right now. Also, hit that notification bell. Go ahead and send your boy, you know, a dollar to... Like I told you, I went I went head first in the streets. And, and, and you know, I got to moving and, uh, you know, was uh, uh, a major drug dealer in, in, in Nashville. But when the police shot me, when they shot me, I wind up getting violated for the uh, the, the helicopter. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They gave me an extra uh, year, which, you know what I'm saying, when the police shot me, it violated me for the probation I was out on. So now when I go uh, uh, get locked up, the guy that I was dealing with, you know what I'm saying, I had left him my cars to hold for me while I go lay down. And he wind up getting caught with thirty six with 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 thirty six kilos, uh, 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 in a hotel in a hotel room. And when they go to uh, you know, his house, they wind up uh seeing my vehicles. So when they see my vehicles, they were like, you know, because in his proper statements, it showed that uh he uh had had mentioned my name the first like three four interviews they had with him. But when they seen my cars. They were like, we don't care nothing about nobody else. What you know about him? You know what I'm saying? What you know about him? And then, you know, he told me every time he dealt with me, I bought 45 kilos. So they gave me, uh, 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 when they found me guilty in trial, uh, they because one thing about the feds, the feds got a thing called relevant conduct. And relevant conduct is, because I got found not guilty, and uh, I had three counts. I got found not guilty on one. And guilty on two. And even the one I got found not guilty on in the feds, if you don't beat all of them, if you get count, if you get found guilty of one and you got two that you beat, they can still use the two that you beat under relevant conduct because they can say it's still part of the same scheme and use that dr those drugs. And that's what allowed them to give me a life sentence because the drugs that they use to boost me 
to the level of receiving a life sentence was what I got found not guilty on. And that's just how they played the game. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's – so, in a nutshell, your business partner. Yeah. Safe to say kind of like the plug. Yeah. He told? Yeah. He told? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's yeah. how it goes. That's yeah, how it so, goes, man. Yeah. So when I got out, uh, he, I was on the federal investigation. I wasn't know. I, I kind of knew, but I didn't know the, I didn't know the seriousness of it. Cause you know, we always feel like, I'm like, I was locked up when he got popped. You know what I'm saying? Shoot, ain't nothing they can do to me. You know what I'm saying? They ain't caught me with nothing. You know what I'm saying? When he got caught, I was locked up. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, how can they even, you know, build any type of case on me? You know what yeah. I'm saying? But it was already, you know, they was already spinning their web. And then when I got out, wind up getting caught up in a, uh, uh, that's where the crack come in at, you know? And, uh, yeah, I, that, but I beat that count. Although I beat that crack count, you know what I'm saying? They still use against me because of the conspiracy on the powder with 20 keys, which they wind up giving me. When I when it all when it was all said and done, a half a kill crack and twenty keys of powder is what they attributed to me with when they found me guilty. Mm. Okay, okay. And when you got found guilty, how old were you? I was twenty four. Twenty four. Twenty four. All right. So now you're twenty four years old. Was this state time or federal time? I forgot. It's, it's federal. Federal time. All right. End up serving 20 years federal, but initially it was life. Yes. So now take us to now it's known they gave you this life sentence. You're 24 years old. You go into prison. What's your state of mind going into prison? Uh, my state of mind is, and it's crazy when right after I got sentenced and I went back in the holding cell, I just said life without, uh, and, uh, I was, the first thing came to my mind was at least I ain't going to catch AIDS. You know what I'm saying? Because I was just, I, I was just <laughs> out, just reckless, you know, <laughs> just, just, just with the females, you know what I'm saying? So. That was that was you know what I'm saying my mindset. But then when I when I went to Oklahoma City and saw how you know when they put you on them on them planes or they walk you through, you know what I'm saying where you get off the plane and go straight into the prison at the airport. That's how the feds got it. You know what I'm saying Oklahoma. As soon as you get off the plane at the airport, you step right into the prison, and it's just like a slave ship, and. Uh, uh, I say it, it, the symbolism is so, 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 so close. And that let me see, damn, it done got real. And now I'm meeting, you know, I'm, I'm in the TV room and I'm just observing, listening to brothers who been locked up, who transferring also, because Oklahoma is the transfer joint to let you know where they finna send you to and, and whatnot. So I'm, uh, you know, I don't know where I'm going. So I asked the counselor, I'm like, uh, oh, come in. I'm like, so where are they sending me to? So he was like, oh, they sending you to Beaumont. So I'm like, where is Beaumont? You know what I'm saying? Oh, I'm way from Tennessee. And they like, oh, that's in Texas. So uh, I, I see there's quite a few other people in here who go going to Beaumont. Mm -hmm. And when I finally get there, you know, I see uh, it done got real because, you know, Beaumont eventually turned into one of the deadliest prisons in America. Mm -hmm. And and I was uh there in its inception. I was there uh from 90 from 97, 98, 99. I stayed like 30 months. And uh it was half of my half of my unit had life sentences. And the rest had 30. You rarely saw anybody under 10 years there. You know, and it was just, you know, that's just the type of minds that was, that was and, and, and how dangerous that institution was.
Yellow just been up in the house in my road. Gotta make it put it on. She don't like when clothes just left Concord. No Carolina, I was licking on booty in a whole lot of vagina. Eat a booze with some ice cream. She'll remember you. Ice cube, make a gym. She'll like the winner. What do you do? Sitting with the crew. I gotta get some food. I see you looking like you do. Had to make a move, make a move. My analytics tell me that majority of you who watch my videos are not subscribed. And this, you know, it's. It's making the algorithm a little tricky for me, you know? If you like to watch my videos, go ahead and hit subscribe right now. Also, hit that notification bell so the videos can get to the people who really want to watch them when it's time. Go ahead and send your boy, you know, a dollar or two. I know you, you got women you want to trick on. I know you got child support. I know you got rent, you know what I'm saying? Listen, if you ain't got it, you ain't got it. I'm black. I know how I be. You want to support this movement, you know what I'm saying? Anything you can send would be greatly appreciated. But if not, hitting the like button is payment enough for me. Now let's get back to that video. Are you able to go into detail about anything crazy you may have seen or experienced while you were there? Did 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 you no nah, I'm not gonna ask you that? Did anyone ever come at you on some extra shit? Did did you see just some off the wall wild stuff happening to somebody? Could you could you give the people a little bit of that type of sauce? Yes, uh well uh yeah, it was uh I would say uh uh you know one of my one of my partners, I know he had a beef with another guy and they got to fighting in the TV room and as they were fighting uh you know, I'm in there with him, uh, and the other brothers in there, uh, you know, with the other guy. So, you know, we try and make sure, you know, everything stay, you know, you know, up and up. They ain't just finna maul each other out, whatever, whatever. But next thing you know, they like grab him while we grab him. So when I grab my man, the dude sucker punching, you know what I'm saying? And then got me. In the middle of something, know what I'm saying? You know, cause I'm I'm fresh he in. Sucker I ain't, punch you. Yeah, no, he sucker punched the guy, my partner. Mm -hmm. Know what I'm saying? Like he, but the other dudes were supposed to help him, you know. But it was me being fresh and not really knowledgeable of how these environments go. You know, I should have, you know, now, you know, of course, hindsight 2020 is if I can't talk you out of not going in there, and then you ain't gonna listen to me. You going in there on your own. Know what I'm saying? Because, you know, uh, my whole thing, if you're not going to listen to me, I'm not going to follow you. Know what I'm saying? And uh, I will hope you 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 do the same thing as it relates to your life. If ain't nobody going to listen to you, then, know what I'm saying, you definitely not going to follow them, I hope. But, yeah, that was uh, what I've learned from that. But, yeah, man, he wind up sucker punching, black in his eye, and just had me feeling bad. And then, you know, uh, uh, luckily, it didn't spill over into. As a matter of fact, the dude was from New York who he got into it with, named Blanco, Blanco, and he he had a whole lot of time. He was just stretching over his gal every day, and he was just just always, you know, he was just kind of just had kind of like a, a you know, uh, how anybody feel once you get a bowl load of time. God damn it, you know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody just happy, and every day he fought, you know, he fighting on his case, and he just. Had enough of it. And then they almost got the Latin Kings and all them into this little thing because I try to break it up. You know what I'm saying? But on the outside, it may appear I was with him. You feel what I'm saying? So that was one incident, something small there. But every Friday, they had a gun tower in the middle of the yard. So they used to shoot out the gun tower almost every Friday night because we played football on Friday nights. And anytime it was like a disturbance or, uh, you know, a whole lot of people just crowding around or whatever, oh, they shooting. They shooting at the tower. You know what I'm saying? And as they shooting, people run into the units because they ain't trying to get stuck on the yard. You know, if you get stuck on the yard and they shooting, now you got to wait out there till they find the bullets or if they find if anybody been hurt, you just got to go through. So as they shooting. Folk running, you know what I'm saying? Like they in the street, like in y'all direction. Man, they shoot. You know what I'm saying? Uh, some say it's rubber bullets. I believe they was real. You know what I'm saying? Because I used to see, you know, they had this little tank they used to have come to the yard, 
to bring the ammunition and drop it off at the tower. You know what I'm saying? So uh I don't I don't think, you know what I'm saying, it was no rubber bullets. But yeah, they used to yeah, shoot at the gun tower down there. So and those I seen a you know a person of course uh get murdered. Now no, you uh, seen it with your own yeah, eyes. Yes, with my own eyes. With my own what, eyes. What what happened with that? How did what was that over? Uh, well, it uh, and it was two white guys. Uh, uh, I think uh, one dude was trying to act like he was finna bullet this white guy. I think, you know what I'm saying? And the white guy was like fed up with it, man. And uh, I think he stole a, a knife out the kitchen, so he had a real a real knife. You know what I'm saying? And I'm talking about it was long. And I was, you know, it was just seeing, I was seeing them sticking in dude's head, man. And it was like, it, it was, I would say, it was a reality check. Cause it was like, I'm like, damn, this is what a motherfucker finna be around for the rest of his life. You know what I'm saying? You know, finna be around this type of shit. Excuse my language. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, man, it's like, when situations like that did arise, it just 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 let me really just brought my situation more. You know what I'm saying to the for to the forefront of this is this where you finna spend the rest of your life at. You know what I'm saying? You know, according to these people. Yeah, I don't. Things like that stick with you for the rest of your life. Yes. You know that's some of what I talk about on my channel is you know. Whether you did 20 years or you did two years, there's a level of PTSD that all of us come home with. And you know, there's no there's no government laws being passed to put formerly incarcerated inmates who may be dealing with PTSD or depression through therapy. You know, they kind of just expect us to come home and figure out a way or mess up again and go to jail. Mm -hmm. You know, like it's, you see things that a human being is not really supposed to see. Like, yes. that's, that's one of my qualms that I have with the government, you know, like a lot of people talk about prison reform and all this other stuff, but it's even more important to, to, give dudes the opportunity to go somewhere to get their mind right. You know, like like part of probation or part of parole should be, listen, you gotta, you gotta go take care of your mental health. You know, and, and, and it should be paid for, you know. <laughs> All the other nonsense that they taxing people to pay for, that's meaningless, you know, some of that, some of that can go towards helping inmates get the help that they need with a mental, you know, like that's, that's how I feel about that. Yellow pills been open in the house in my room, gotta make a pretty darn show, light man clothes, just left Concord, no Carolina, I was licking on booty in a whole lot of vagina, eat a booze with some ice cream, sure remember you, ice cube, make a chip, shit feel like the winner, dude. do sitting with the crew, I been get some food, I see you looking like a dude, had to make a move, make a move. My analytics tell me that, Majority of you who watch my videos are not subscribed. And this, you know, it's it's making the algorithm a little tricky for me, you know. If you like to watch my videos, go ahead and hit subscribe right now. Also hit that notification bell so the videos can get to the people who really want to watch them when it's time. Go ahead and send your boy, you know, a dollar or two. I know you you got women you want to trick on. I know you got child support. I know you got rent, you know what I'm saying? Listen. If you ain't got it, you ain't got it. I'm black. I know how I be. You want to support this movement. You know what I'm saying? Anything you can send would be greatly appreciated. But if not, hitting the like button is payment enough for me. Now let's get back to that video. Yellow pills been open in the house in my room. Gotta make a pretty darn show. Light man clothes just left Concord. No Carolina. I was licking on booty in a whole lot of vagina. Eat a booze with some ice cream. Sure remember you. Ice cube make a chip. Shaving like the way do. Do sitting with the crew. I bet get some food. I see you looking like a dude. Had to make a move, make a move. About three years in Beaumont. About how many different federal prisons do you think you've been in during your entire bit? I went. I, I I went to five. I was 
I, when I left from Beaumont, I got a, a near release transfer, which I went to Edgefield, South Carolina. I went to your area. Okay. You know and down by Augusta, Aiken, and all that right there. Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, and I did. Uh, I got that in two thousand, two thousand one, two thousand two. Uh, and I I left there. I went to Memphis. Was in Memphis like seven years. Uh, got kicked out of Memphis. Got got caught up in a riot, and sent to uh Three Rivers, Texas. Caught up in a riot. What, what, was this a a riot with the police or something? Uh, uh, a ride with uh, uh, some Hispanics with uh, 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 some Mexicans. The Mexicans. Yes, yes. Was this like uh, Serranos or something like that? Yes, yes. It was uh, uh, Serranos. It was uh, basically it was the Serranos who uh, uh, jumped on a brother from uh, uh, uh on, who was black. Uh. Yeah. Well, and how how it went down? You care to you care to uh uh you care to hear how it went down, or you want? Cause sure, you had another sure, question. Sure. Yeah. Oh uh, well. Uh, all this happened right after uh I gave my life sentence back. Uh, when I left Memphis in two thousand eight of October, it was like ninety Mexicans. When I got back. In March 2009, it was over 500 Mexicans. And uh, uh, they had changed Memphis to, into an uh, immigration uh, 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 institution. So they were sending a lot of uh, Hispanics who probably was on their way home and where they didn't have to go too far. They had them all in one spot. You know what I'm saying? But uh, anyway, it was like stuff happening every other weekend over the washer over the drive, over the microwave, over a TV, because so many of them had came, and then they wanted more more things. Like, they only had one TV. So they were trying to find a way to get them another TV, and it ain't number four. So, you try, you know, in the process of doing that, you finna take away from somebody. So, uh, uh, we had a meeting and uh, with the blacks, and they was like, well, we need to uh, try to you know, have a, a little bit more unity so we can uh, uh, be able to uh, control the situation if it mm -hmm. pop off, because if it pop off, it, they don't care where you're from. It's just going down when it go down. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So uh, they nominated me the leader or the spokesperson for all the blacks. So I had like 500 blacks from all over the country. You know what I'm saying? Uh, 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 I would say under my guidance, and I met all of the heads of the uh, Hispanics, you know, all of the different uh, uh, Hispanics. I met all of them and just, you know, look, don't put your hands on no blacks. We ain't going to put our hands on y'all. If y'all uh -huh. got an issue with one of us, come to me. I rectify it, vice versa. So one morning, uh, this brother, you know what I'm saying? When it all come down, he was wrong. The brother was wrong all day. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, early one morning, he in the child hall, he sitting at their table. And then they like, man, look, man, uh, you know, we trying to, you know, we trying to have our little meal. We eat right here every day. But he bucked on it, you know what I'm saying, because he seen he had some strength. And from there, it wind up, you know what I'm saying, he wind up getting jumped, getting whooped. So when he get whooped, I rarely don't even go to breakfast, but this morning I go up there because it was a brother going home and he had been down like by 20 and I was just seeing him off and I was like, okay, they got donuts. I'm going to go up here to the child hall. Yeah. So when I go to the child hall, that's where they jump him at up in there. So when they take him out, brother's like, damn, man, y'all, you see that? They just jumped on the brother, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, where was he from? They like, well, it don't even matter where he from. Uh, he black. I'm like, you know what? You show sure right. Yeah. Go get everybody. Tell everybody uh suit up. So they go round them up. You know what I'm saying? I've been there long enough, so I know to get off the camera. So I already done got off the camera, you know what I'm saying? You know, but since y'all wanna take off, you know what I'm saying? All the brothers lace up, come over where I was at. And I was the first one to lay the charge over to him. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and it took off right again up in there. You know what, what I'm saying? Yes, and in, yeah, in, in dining hall, in child hall, yeah. So 
uh, they come, shut the whole thing down, you know what I'm saying, and sent us all to our units. They wind up locking me up, and uh, we had a Hispanic warden, and uh, I guess it was just his way of getting back, you know what I'm saying, at me, where he sent me 45 minutes away from Mexico to Three Rivers, Texas. You know what I'm saying? Well, all all the staff was Hispanic, except probably three or four. And, 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 and you know, it was quite a few Hispanics down on the yard. And when I got there, my case manager told me, uh, she was a white woman. She was like, uh, yeah, I see in here, uh, you got into it with some Mexicans. She was like, we got some different Mexicans. We got different Mexicans down here. They tougher than the ones you, you just left. I'm like, all right, and I'm just letting you know, you know what I'm saying, that uh, I'm going to protect myself while I'm here. She was like, well, you going to the yard? I said, absolutely. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, when I then shoot, then have no issue. You know what I'm saying? But some stuff popped off down there. You know what I'm saying? But it's like, you know, every joint I was at, you know, it was, of course, something popped off. And, you know, when you're on the front line, you're going to always be, you know what I'm saying, yeah. Shoot, directly involved is just close to it, some kind of way. My analytics tell me that majority of you who watch my videos are not subscribed, and this, you know, it's it's making the algorithm a little tricky for me. You know, if you like to watch my videos, go ahead and hit subscribe right now. Also, hit that notification bell so the videos can get to the people who really want to watch them when it's time. Go ahead and send your boy, you know, a dollar or two. I know you, you got women you want to trick on. I know you got child support. I know you got rent. You know what I'm saying? Listen, if you ain't got it, you ain't got it. I'm black. I know how I be. You want to support this movement. You know what I'm saying? Anything you can send would be greatly appreciated. But if not, hitting the like button is payment enough for me. Now, let's get back to that video. If you want to tell us what happened when you was at the new spot, you know, I, I, I like to hear that story, too. Yo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, the same thing where there's some Hispanics uh got got whooped by some blacks because they weren't trying to let no blacks in the room with them or something. And it was in a unit next door to us. And they wind up uh uh having a life flight, like about four or five Mexicans up out of there. So, uh, you know, they pissed off. They like, you know what I'm saying, send word out. Uh, Whenever the doors pop or whenever the yard open back open, don't know black, better not go to the wreck yard. Yeah. So, so you know they wind up opening the wreck yard on a Saturday. <laughs> now everybody know me. I work out. You know what I'm saying every every Saturday because you know I'm the person on the yard. If you got a homeboy come in. And he act like he can work out it. He can do this. He can do that. You're going to bring him to me before I can go on and flatline him or make him land like a 747. You <laughs> know what I'm saying? You know, I'm I'm him. I'm, the, uh, you know, I'm I'm the workout guru. You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm the people's champ. You know what I'm saying? As it relates to, yeah, yeah. To, 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 you know, black folk. You know, I'm, 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 I'm the stand up for, for us on whatever, whatever we got, we got to do. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, uh, they put the call out. Don't know blacks better not go to the wreck yard. So had it been on a Friday, I would have used common sense and not went. You know what I'm saying? Because people don't normally see me probably on the on the Friday, but they know I'm gonna be there on Saturday. So I had to go because that was my routine. And I didn't want to have it like somebody making a threat and now that's gonna scare me from not going. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And so, you know, it was only a handful of us blacks went out there, man. You know what I'm saying? I would say a total of probably, you know what I'm saying, out of a, a compound of uh, 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 probably about a thousand and probably 500 probably was blacks. It might have been 30 blacks probably went to the wreck yard that morning. You know what I'm saying? And uh, the Mexicans, they, it was like about, about 150 of them came out. You know what I'm saying? And shoot, when they came out, you know, I'm just walking the track. Uh, mm -hmm. and they all came to softball field and then they just, you know what I'm saying, got to just, uh, I think it might have gave them a kickball or something. They just started playing kickball, you know what I'm saying? So I was like, man, hey, you know, I ain't know what was going to happen, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, I was prepared, even though it was foolish to, to, to go out there, and I will say that. But, hey, you know, in there, man, you know, uh, 
you gonna be what what they say image is everything yeah. you know yeah image is everything so facts. yes facts all right all right good stories good stories well we reached the end of this interview but first why don't you go ahead and tell the people the future plans that you have for yourself while you're yeah. embracing your freedom. I believe you told me you said you were working on the book as well. So go ahead and plug yourself. Tell the people where they can find you on social media. Just tell everyone, you know, your plans for the future. Yes. Okay, this is what I want to say. Uh, anybody that uh, heard the sound of my voice and y'all feel that my perspective need to be heard or y'all like the content that y'all heard, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is Larry Turnley, L-A-R-R-Y, T-U-R-N-L-E-Y. And currently, I'm a, uh, I'm uh, matter of fact, this this coming up Monday, I will be speaking on a criminal justice panel at a law school with uh, two sheriffs and a law professor uh, talking about criminal justice reform. Uh, and, uh, you know, I do uh, uh, have a, uh, some some things that I feel that if they are enacted, it would be very uh, 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 it it'll be great for returning citizens as well as brothers and sisters who are out here that are returning citizens. And uh, I just wrote a bill, uh, and I'm hoping that this bill uh, get passed here in Tennessee. I know in New York they just passed uh, it up there, which is uh, the uh, Clean Slate Act, uh, which they just passed in New York, but I'm trying to get a version of that sent down, uh, passed down here. But mine is going to uh, uh, involve child support because I feel that child support has been weaponized against our Ooh. community. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, and it has. Yes, yes, it, yes, the hell it has. Man. Yes, and, and if we don't address that part, it don't matter how many good jobs they create if you don't deal with child support and having it to where uh, uh, people are not going to be working for free on these jobs, then, you know, it, it's, it just don't, it just don't make sense without addressing that. So that's what I uh, have attached to that bill that I created. It's kind of like New York's. And yes, like you uh, said, uh, I'm currently working on my autobiography. However, I do have a book that's currently out. It's called What's Your Excuse? Which y'all see the shirt right here. What's Your Excuse? How I Use My Prison Experience. Good, good branding. Good branding, yeah, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Good to brand. save $100,000. I saved $100,000 my first five years home. And, 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 man, hey, all I can tell you is, man, if we would, especially if you don't been locked up and you out here and you trying to figure out how you going to uh, 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 create that, that new start, sentence yourself to five years. Don't wait for the courts to give you five years. Give yourself five years to block out everything, to get two, three jobs, however many jobs you need for five years, and just focus on stacking, focus on saving. And with, with those within them five years, you'll be able to take off a year of not working. If you're a hustler, because you're going to figure out what to do with that money to where that money going to make money for you. Great advice. Great yeah. advice. Great yeah. advice. Yes. And, and last but not least, I want, I'm i I'm also working on uh, uh, helping people get pardons because I'm eligible for a pardon next year. And I think that that's what all of us need to aspire to do. If you done been locked up, if you're not out here trying to be totally free, you in the way. You playing. Know what I'm saying? Your main goal when you come home from prison, it ain't time to celebrate when we come home from prison. It's time to celebrate when we get all our rights back, when we totally free. Know what I'm saying? And you can be totally free by applying pressure. That's what I'm doing. I'm applying pressure. Know what I'm saying? I'm trying to, know what I'm saying, get involved in as much stuff as I can get involved in for as doing positive things in my community as well as being a good example for the people who are in my community and abroad. Who, like the brother spoke on earlier, know what I'm saying at the beginning of this 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 this, this interview, uh, man, look, 
your good works will not be overlooked. You will be rewarded, man. And if you don't get rewarded, then that's when we can just let the people know. Don't come to us with all these talking about a pardon of people who really deserve and the one can't get now. You know that's what I'm right. saying? We got to apply pressure. That's so, right. so that's my whole thing right there, brother. That's right. All right, man. Listen. Thank you once again, man. This has been another great interview. You've seen yes, it right sir. here, man. I got yes, an exclusive Larry yes, Turnley interview for Full Vlad got to him. <laughs> Before Breakfast Club got to him. No, I'm talking.